Welcome to the class on reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. In this video, I discuss the dilemma of exploration versus exploitation. So in a graph like the one here, we have different actions to choose from. And ideally, we would take the action with a maximal Q value. The problem is that we only have estimated Q values indicated here by this little hat. So the correct Q values are not known. The reason is that the reward probabilities are not known and the branching probabilities are not known. And so we have the following dilemma. In order to find out a good estimate of the Q values, we should play often the same action. And we should have to do this for each of the action. But that costs time and money because only if you play the good action, you can get the optimal reward. And that means we have a dilemma between exploration, that means playing every action lots of times to find out whether it's good or not, and exploitation, which means playing the best action so that you get the maximal reward. And this is known as the exploration exploitation dilemma. So take the action which looks optimal, so X to maximize the reward, Sounds like a reasonable strategy, but we don't know yet whether the action that looks good really is good. And this is what you see on this little example here. We start from the state S. We have initialized all Q values at zero. And we have a small learning rate. So that's 0.2. And with this specific numeric example, Let's now calculate the Q values using this update formula here. So the initial value is zero, you choose action A1, you get a reward of 0.5, which means you landed here. Okay, that was trial one. Trial two, you choose action A2, you get 0.4. Ah, that means you ended up here. Now, what's the Q values? You plug this into this formula here, and with eta equal 0.2, the initial value was always zero, so it's just 0.2 times whatever you got, and these, is, these are values 0.1 and 0.08. This means action one looks better. And that, therefore, if you now play greedy, you are going to continue with action one. Not bad. However, the real Q values are different. The real Q values you would estimate by this formula, and then this would take into account the branching ratios of 0.5. So the real Q values are 0.25 for action A1, and they are 0.3 because of this better branching ratio for action A2. So actually, action two is better. So playing greedy too early, that means before you really have explored, gets you stuck in a suboptimal solution. And this is called the exploration exploitation dilemma. The Q values are not known and you like to play the best Q values, the one that looks highest, but then you get stuck. In the following, I will omit the little hats that I should put here for all these estimates since we don't have, we never have the correct Q values available. So the problem now is that the correct Q values are not known. And uh, so we have to play with estimating Q values and taking the one that looks best. This greedy strategy is not good as we have seen in the simple example. On the other hand, we don't want to explore equally. And so the first idea is to play epsilon greedy. That means most of the time you take the action which looks best, that's the one from the greedy, and if there are 10 different actions, then the nine other actions, the nine suboptimal action, actions you take with equal probability epsilon over nine. Epsilon greedy, a very popular strategy. Another strategy 
is the softmax strategy. During your learning procedure, the Q values change all the time. And now you favor the action that which has the highest Q value in a form that's e to the beta Q of A prime. And you normalize this with the e to the beta Q of A of all the other actions. Beta is a parameter, often, is, often beta is taken equal 10, which favors a lot the best action. Sometimes pay, 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 people take eta, a, a beta equal one or two. It's a parameter that's up to you. And then there is a third strategy, which is called optimistic greedy. And this has a completely different philosophy. In fact, you play greedy. You, play, you take this action that's predicted by greedy, but you play the trick. You initialize Q values at a value that is way too high. Suppose you sort of know that your reward is between zero and one. So that means Q values should also be between zero and one. However, you initialize with a Q of equal to 10. Then whatever you take, whatever action you take, you're bound to find something that goes down because R, as I said, is between zero and one. Q is in the starting with 10. So it's always negative and you will move downward. And therefore, at the beginning, you balance out all possible actions more or less equally. And at some point, that depends on this parameter eta and your initial value of Q, you start to play more greedy. And here is a simulation with this epsilon greedy approach. We have different possibilities. Here is epsilon equal 0.1. This is epsilon equal 0.01. And what we plot here is the average reward. There are 10 different actions. And in each action, the reward that you get in the transition fluctuates around this mean, R1, R10. And so here you see that while you play up to a thousand trials, epsilon equal 0.1 is the better choice. However, the other, the smaller epsilon would eventually take over. It's just very, very slow to, uh, to, to move the Q values around with this 0.01 value. Another way to evaluate this is not via average reward, but via optimal actions. So, the optimal action would be the one which has the best mean reward, the highest mean reward. And again, you see that epsilon 0.1 is more likely to take the optimal action at an 80% level, whereas epsilon 0.01 is after 1000 trial, not yet at the same level. But it's improving. It's sort of still increasing linearly. If you play completely greedy, epsilon equals zero, it's not improving, you're stuck. And here is this epsilon greedy algorithm now combined with the iterative update rule for the Q values. And this iterative update rule is the one that we saw in this little first exercise. N of A is the number of times you have played action A. And so this update parameter eta decreases with the number you have played these actions. And you take the best action, the one that looks best, with probably one minus epsilon, and one of the other actions with probability epsilon.